So next coming to the stage to keep this thing rolling, we have Miss Jennifer Picker Pickering connecting cultures and creating community through music and arts has been Jennifer's driving passion since 1995 when she founded the Lake Eden Arts Festival or LEAF, a nonprofit community arts organization in Asheville, North Carolina. North Carolina, many Charlotte Leafers I being one of them, know their signature festival in Black Mountain, and LEAF extends throughout their local community and to count them, 10 countries, 10 countries. Y'all give it up for Jennifer Pickering. Cue having us do clap your hands and all those, took me back to my camp years. However, Lake Eden Leaf is really where my journey began, where I started to think of all the different possibilities of using the music and the arts to break down those boundaries and connect cultures. And it happens in the oddest ways. And then it seemed strange that I was bringing all these amazing artists, like the Neighborhood Theater does, to Black Mountain, but we weren't getting them out in the community. They were right there. So how could we get them out into our community and find those gems within our local community? Started envisioning our local kids performing alongside international artists. And then how does it happen that you take a festival to your community and then you take it globally? How, does the, how do these kids from an orphanage in Panama end up dancing on a stage in Black Mountain and then going and weaving throughout our local neighborhoods? and just looking for those special places within your own backyard of where that can happen. So every once in a while you go on vacation. It looks like vacation. I got bored on the second week, and I walked down to the local community school and asked the life-changing question, so how many kids on the island of Beckway are learning steel pan? One, the governor's granddaughter. And I was like, ooh. So it seemed really easy, right? Find a local street musician named Delvis, and you find a place to have it, and then, you know, you get some local instruments made, start a program. Fortunately, I didn't know the complexities of steel pans and the tunings of them. So now, seven years later, 70 kids on the island of Beckway know their traditions, and we actually had a miraculous, miraculous trip happen where 10 of them came this past October. They even had their first pumpkin carving experience right here in Charlotte. And one thing that one of the fathers said is, they know their traditions now. It's good for their minds, it's good for our island, and they weren't interested before. Low cost, high impact. I thought that was easy, right? And then I end up in Rwanda. I thought to go work with a bunch of kids in an orphanage, and I end up with a group of 25 street kids who literally lived here. Meet Rasta. Well, we had drums and a drum teacher. They stepped up. They didn't have toothbrushes, they didn't have a home, they started going to drum classes. And it gave them hope. It all of a sudden gave them a reason for people not to see them just as street kids. However, a couple of years into it, we had one of our street kids, Jean Paul, one of the best drummers, got shot dead by a policeman on Christmas. And it was like, okay, we need to have you guys in a home now. 25 guys. $300 for five months, well actually $500 three months in Rwanda for rent. And Daniel in the middle is now the Rwandan leading Inanga player and has played for the president. They've been on this journey and as they say, Jackson says, now the music has not only given us hope, we're now an example for our community and for our country. And as one of the artists said, I used to know them as street kids. They didn't have a voice, but they had a lot to say. And then the music gave them the voice. Hope in Tanzania. He used to see his grandfather dancing in the fields and just thought he was goofing off with his friends. In his LEAF program, he's learned the traditions of his culture. He says, I'm proud now to be Tanzanian. I know what my traditions are, and I know what my grandfather was doing. lost the mic there. So I'm back. So in Guatemala, 2007, if you have a friend going somewhere and he's a musician but he didn't start a music program, just ask, why not? El Tejar, a rural mountainous village, 
They didn't have any music happening. Now, years later, we had a group come that they've been working five days a week since 2007. We put them into one of our local schools, and what we watched was the Latino kids locally who were so marginalized rose to be rock stars within a week because they were the only ones who could translate. So these kids are the culture keepers of their traditions. And not only that, but they're our future. So let's step back into our own communities. And one thing that we have to look and say, okay, it's really easy internationally to get kids enthused and instinctively connecting to their cultures. Locally, it's not quite as easy. My God Kids inspired Leaf Schools and Streets. And one of the pieces is getting into their community and giving kids a way when they get on the drum or they get on an instrument to positively express themselves. However, look around your corner again in your neighborhood. Mr. Green saw all this coolness happening in Asheville and said, I see what's happening and I've been left behind. So we went to his high school and we ended up doing a program where we came back and did music sessions in the laundromat and brought all the kids from around the different neighborhoods to see him. So we've got these amazing performers coming. Give them unique opportunities, like we had Mickey Hart in one of our, in one of our programs out in the community working with the kids. I found out this morning Bootsy Collins is going to go give a funk program at one of our local high schools. So let them be part of your community. And then you think about, so Tanarawin, these guys at one point were young Saharan desert children and they're part of the Tuareg tribe. What happened in their journey where they went from being Civil War fighters to being world-class musicians and ending up in our backyard? Back to the beginning. So our jazz kids opened up for Preservation Hall, and then they got invited to New Orleans. And they might not ever be on the big screen, but not only did they open at Congo Square, now they're on the big stages in their own neighborhood. And setting example and possibilities of what music and arts can just break open those boundaries. Yesterday, we found out 11 of our kids from Haiti got visas, which is pretty miraculous. So they'll be coming to May Leaf. And as their teacher says, if you don't know your traditions, you don't know yourself. Reflecting back to sitting in a Congolese refugee, refugee camp with Evie and some other friends from LEAF, starting a program, and singing along with Shaka Zulu. Pick up your drum, come together, because we're all stronger together. Thank you.